All right. Well, welcome to the Pi Day uh, Chaos Community Meeting 314. It's great to have everybody here. I am going to share my screen. Um, so the agenda today, we have a few things that I'd like to introduce and kind of get feedback on. Um, and the first is, is chaos user communities. So I'll kind of move this down a little bit. Um, and I'll make this a little bit bigger so we can all see it a little bit better. So the, the premise here is that, and I'm just, this is being introduced right now. So right now we have, um, the OSPO working group, which is, I think a lot of, you know, kind of in collaboration with the to-do group, which has meets at the the old value working group time so it meets every two weeks and it's it's in the chaos project and we talk about um, metrics and metrics related things as related generally to corporate open source program offices we are also going to be starting a university a similar group at the university ospo level um and that's that pink or purple bubble over on the right. Mm -hmm. And then I've been talking with folks at NumPy and Pandas about doing a similar user community for the scientific software community. So each one of these user groups is essentially a group of people who are in a similar context who would like to use metrics, metrics models, and software as developed by Chaos, um, but need some guidance and would benefit from talking to people who are also in their context, you know, about metrics that are applicable for say corporate OSPOs, university OSPOs, or scientific software communities. A lot of the folks, I have a sense that a lot of the folks that participate in these user communities don't necessarily want to participate in like the making of metrics, you know, the actual details of making metrics or the details of making metrics models or contributing to Augur software. You know what I mean? Like they don't want to get into those details. They just simply want to think through what are the metrics and metrics models that are relevant to um, their particular user community. All right. So those are those bubbles at the top. And right now, again, we have one and the second one is forming and we're calling them work, work groups at the moment. And I'm suggesting a name change to user community. Um, each one of these user communities, kind of that top right part, right up here would have access to chaos resources. So these user communities would be located within the, the world, the chaos world. And so they would use the chaos Zoom channels. They would use Google Docs. Um, we have us obviously Slack org. So we would set up channels, GitHub repos if necessary. Um, we'd ask each one of the communities to be led by people who are experienced in that specific domain. So for example, in the OSPO user community, Dawn Foster is leading that along with Anna from the to-do group on the purple, the university user community, uh, Saeed Chowdhury from Carnegie Mellon and uh, Stephanie Leggy, Leggy from UC Santa Cruz are is leading that. So they both have university open source program offices. And then I had mentioned the scientific user communities as potentially led by folks from NumPy and Panda. So we would have people lead these efforts. So we're not really looking for chaos members to lead these, but just kind of to lead the discussion around metrics in each one of these. I'll stop here for a second and see if you have any questions, because I do want to talk about liaisons down here. Does this make sense to folks? Or you have concerns? This is not done by any means. I'm just putting this out there. Yeah, I, I really like how this is like the the diagram kind of like explains a lot. And it's I think I looked at the document you sent about the chaos con feedback. I think a lot of um that feedback kind of resonates with what mm -hmm. this diagram um points to like how other communities and how user groups can interact and use uh, the metrics that we create in chaos. So it makes a ton of sense. So mm -hmm. right. cool. what, what the question mm -hmm. is what are potential do uh, is it is three D max or like what are the potential user groups that we plan to have in the future too? Yeah. 
so at, at this point, I, three are the ones that are kind of in process potentially. Um, Elizabeth had talked about an events, uh, like an event organizer group, just because of the DEI badging. So a group that would talk about metrics that are specifically relevant in that area. Um, and then, oh, the other one was community managers. So just folks who just lead open source communities. And I think there has been efforts to kind of coordinate community managers in the past, but they haven't all gone real well. So maybe organizing folks around the specific thing of metrics might bring people together to organize around a particular thing. So those are maybe the other two that are kind of at least thoughts out there. Okay, that's great. The question that I would have yeah. if we um, if we kind of defined already what the differences are between these user communities versus working groups within chaos, just to kind of clarify mm -hmm. how like how they are operating, what their goals are, and what the differentiating factors between them are, just to help people understand, you know, when to create a working group, when to create a user community. Yep. Like how that's different. Um, quite, quite in, my, in, in the way this hits me is that because I've been to a lot of the working group meetings the last five years. Um, I, I think the working groups have largely accomplished the goals that they had to establish a baseline of common me shared metrics that the industry and open source as a whole can, can utilize. And most of our work now is in the development of metrics models that are different by uh, this um, vertical domain instead of a, a common across all open source. So this, to me, it feels a bit like a, a practical pivot for how we organize ourselves. I don't, I don't know if others are taking it the same way, but that's what's in my head as I, as I think about this. I, I to, so to your point, to your point, Sean, I agree. I think it's a practical pivot of supporting folks who want to use, as Ruth had pointed out, the metrics and the tools that are made available from chaos. So I, I agree with that. Um, Ildiko, to your point of like, um, like making sure we articulate the difference between user communities and working groups, that's a super, it's a point well taken. And I do think it's something that we would need to do. Um, and it just hasn't been done yet. The other, the other question that I that I had is, uh, do we consider these user communities sort of part of chaos, or are these kind of shared with the other community or um, organization uh, who are participating, like for the OSPO one, for yeah. instance? So, are the to do group people participating in a chaos user community, or or is this community kind of a shared group between the two? Does my question make sense? Yeah, no, it totally makes sense. Okay. Um, yep. And it's a it's a good question. Um, so in the OSPO user community case, you're correct. It's with the to do group and the purple one, the university user community. There's a whole, there's another group called OSPO plus plus, which takes a look at OSPOs inside of universities. So both the red and the purple kind of have other established communities with them at the moment. Um, to, to me, I was trying to locate them in the chaos project, just kind of from that upper right corner. So they would use chaos resources um, that we would provide the support for that. And the, the thought was, is if we have it located in the chaos project, um, there might be some shared commonalities between the colored circles that we can help kind of translate between them. Um, the other option is to have the respective, like the to-do group or OSPO++ host them. Um, but because it's metrics and metrics model oriented, I, to me, it made a little bit more sense to have it in the chaos project. Does that help Ildico or more? Common? Yeah, I, um, I mean, uh, the question was really orienting towards just understanding if we have clarity on 
like who takes responsibility where the resources are and if every resource is there or if there's anything that's shared just to kind of avoid confusions in terms of you know who's hosting that that community that that user group or user community um and just who comes to who so i my question was really more around okay. clarifying and making sure that that we are on, all on the same page in both organizations in the purple and red uh, cases mm -hmm. um and it's not something that comes up like a half year from now that I don't know, someone gets confused about, oh, but I'm storing something here as opposed to there. Fair enough. Uh, OK, great. Hopefully I got that kind of down here. Ildiko, if I didn't just add. Yeah, I think that looks good. Yeah. Okay. Um, Anita? Um, I just wanted to add that I, I actually like that we're taking this outside to other communities, because recently, I got contacted by a design community who was interested in adopting the chaos metrics. And um, what they're looking for is not to get involved with chaos. They just want to leave it on the metrics that we currently have for their community. And we're asking how they can do that. So I was kind of confused on how to, where to point them to. So I just referred them to Elizabeth. So it's I think it would be good to also highlight how other communities can adopt these metrics without actively being involved with them, the chaos community too. Yep. Um, I'm going to get I'm just. Um, great. Okay, so the at least the first impression seems pretty positive from everybody, which is nice. Um, there are, and to your point, Anita, I completely agree with you. Like, I think a lot of these user communities don't want to attend like the risk working group meeting, or they don't want to attend the metrics model meeting. Um, it's just, it's too, too much detail that maybe they don't particularly like. Um, did you have a comment, Sean? No, I was just agreeing. Yeah. And so... What I, I think a few things would need to happen in the chaos project. So here's kind of put on your a different way of thinking about this, not just from the user community perspective, but here internally at the chaos project, which is um, I do think we would have to have liaisons from who are familiar with the chaos project attend consistently the OSPO user community a different liaison, the science user community, and a different liaison, the university user community. And it's not that that person would lead the discussion. That is actually done by the people who have the experience in that domain. Um, but it would be a liaison who can help take minutes, perhaps, or take notes. Um, also listen if the OSPO user community is saying, you know what, we would really benefit from a metrics model that does A, B, and C. Like having somebody listen to what those new metrics or metrics models might be needed um, for each of those communities or the communities are asking for things that we already have and the liaison could point them to the published metrics, you know, like a particular metric or a particular metric model that might be useful. So somebody who can kind of translate between the the user community and the chaos project and kind of that detail. Does that, oh, even things like ChaosCon, let's say one of the user communities wanted to have a afternoon session at ChaosCon, you know, like how, how do we, how would we as the science user community participate in that? And then, you know, if I'm a liaison or Ruth, if you're a liaison, like, you know who to ask inside of the chaos project to coordinate that. So I'll, I'll stop there for a second. People have thoughts on this person. I think it's a leadership role in the chaos project. Does that make sense? The liaison would attend the OSPO user community meeting. It's once every, it's twice a month. And they would listen and participate 
and help kind of connect resources that are in the chaos project to that user community or with that user community. The thing is, I already like for the OSPO working group, I think um, some people are like already do attend. Yeah. So how do we like, how do we define that role? Like people do already attend the OSPO <laughs> group meeting. Yep. Um, so you're you're there. I'm there. Sean's there. Elizabeth is there. So yeah, you you are correct. So in that mm -hmm. case, it may not be difficult to find somebody to take on the liaison role. Um, but you're right. We probably need to define uh -huh. that. <laughs> like if you're already doing it, like agreed, we're all there. But like I can't. It would be too much, especially if we have six more. Or, sorry, three more potential user communities asking one person to not only attend the chaos working group meetings, but then also all of the user group. Yeah, meetings. that just gets to be quite a bit. I, I, I. Sometimes I feel like example for the university. I might not attend that because maybe I'm not interested in it. Exactly. Sorry. So we might get to do. Um, user groups where people are not really interested so we need one person to at least exactly. be there and, and more can certainly attend but just kind of one person who's designated in that role that we can kind of like a, a lead for one of the working groups you know what I mean or like like the chapters you know that we kind of know who to talk to yeah and I think yeah. this might be tricky but um, you know, having like, for example, the OSPO user group came out of like people talking about we need to have this this um user group, right? And then the people that brought up the conversation attend these meetings. Mm -hmm. So I think something we could use as a potential for bringing up new user groups is. Is there somebody like who brought who brings the idea? Is there somebody to, you know, facilitate the conversation there? Um, or are you willing to do it as well? So we don't open up user groups and it becomes the the other end of people participating in the user group to not have any help at mm -hmm. all. So maybe if someone brings up the idea, we should have, for example, a design group or a community managers group um who who will be the liaison like we have to make that um documented or maybe not not very rigid but have somebody at least that would be there before we launch that um user community or user group. Yep. okay i like that yeah so i think kind of to to your point ruth um I think it aligns with Ildiko's point. So we do need to doc. I probably need to start documenting this a little bit and specifying what that role could be. And I think what you had said, if somebody's going to bring up a new user community idea, <laughs> great. Maybe that's the first person who serves as the liaison. So, <laughs> and maybe not, maybe yeah. they can find a, an alternative person, but it's kind of, it would be great if that person could help at least identify yeah. a liaison. Yeah. I think the model that, is being followed to this point is there's somebody either within or adjacent to the chaos project who would like to see these metrics models pursued for whatever larger purpose they have in the domain. Yep. And we're just kind of really experienced at doing this. And it's, we're a nice little organization to help. Yep. When, and for each of these, to, to that point, I think each of these, you know, for design or event organizers or community managers, we, we find somebody to actually lead the user community yeah. from that group. Like, it's not one of us. Like, it's yeah. hard for me to speak to event organization because that's just not something I do. I'm happy to, to, like, be the liaison for that and point to metrics. But was that kind of your point, Sean? Yeah. Okay. Um, so then kind of moving just down this um hi Mary Blessing. It's good to have you here. Can somebody share the minutes with her? Yeah. Or I think maybe Ruth is already doing that. Yes. Done. All right. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> 
And so then the the last thing is this liaison. Basically, I think in large part what what that liaison is going to have to do is is listen in on the the discussions that are happening, for example, in the OSPO user community. And if there are new metrics that we don't have, we need to essentially have those developed in the chaos project. Or if there's new metrics models that we don't have, we need to 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 develop those in the chaos project. And the way that I think this would work is, again, let's just pretend, Ruth, that you were the liaison for the OSPO user community and say there was a new metric that needed to be developed. I think where we're going to start developing most of our metrics is via common at this point. And so common, if you could just like the, the liaison part would just be like articulating kind of what the premise of the metric is. It doesn't have to be a full development, but just like what, what is the intention of the metric? So it might just be a paragraph. In common, we would actually frame it out using the template. You know what I mean? So that wouldn't be the responsibility of the liaison unless you wanted to participate in that. Um, and then when we're done kind of framing it out in common, we would just ask you to bring it back to the OSPO user community and say, is this what you're talking about? You know what I mean? Here's what we kind of developed. And then just kind of serving as that, you know, that connection point between the groups that are making the metrics or the metrics models and the community. Does, oh, that, yeah. does that make yeah, sense? I, yeah, it does. I do have a question. What's the difference sure. between a liaison and a lead? Like, like, for, like for what you're doing with Chaos Africa? Mm-hmm. Oh, I mean, you're yeah. Doing... Like we have, say for example, we have done um kind of like leading things up the uh, OSPO yeah. working. So what's the difference between a liaison oh. and a lead? I think the the lead. So the liaison to me, um, is somebody who assists in, um, bringing that conversation back to the chaos project, kind of that bottom part here, when when needed from a metrics or metrics model perspective. I think in that, in the case of Dawn, her being a lead for the OSPO user community, she does happen to also be a, a very active chaos member. And so I think in that case, OSPO. <laughs> yeah. And, and she's, I mean, she's just, she's active, but I think in say, for example, the university user community, it's Saeed and Stephanie, who don't really participate in the chaos project down here. So and I think Saeed and Stephanie and maybe Stephen, you know, from Rochester Institute of Technology would kind of lead the conversation for the group of people who are in their same context. So they can okay. they can kind of speak more freely about like in in the university setting wouldn't it be great if we had metric A, metric B and metric C and metric model you know, and we had a metric model D. So that I think the leads are just kind of organizing people who are in that particular context and organizing that discussion. Okay, I think I, I get it now. And then you have a lot of rule definitions to do. <laughs> I do, I do, I, I definitely do. So I, I think there's there's certainly the community lead, which is just kind of leading that context specific discussion. Mm -hmm for that user group. There's the liaison who would kind of sit in as a participant in that discussion, listen, and bring back kind of action items that need to be done to the chaos to community, and then bring them back to the user community, kind of serving as that point in between. Um, that's that's think, really cool. What's that? I said, yeah, I said, that's really cool. Um, you just, I think we have this role document in the handbook. I don't know if that still exists. If you just be to define these different roles. I think so too. Out there. But yeah. I, I am interested in doing the liaison for possible. Awesome. And I think too, to your point, when you talked about the liaison, need to specify this bit, a bit more, you know what I mean? And then maybe whoever brings up this if in also with respect to the lead let's say we were going to start an event organizer like a blue circle for event organizers we, we would ask the people who have an interest in developing this community we would ask them to step up to be the lead 
So Amen. if it's say somebody from LF event who has an interest in in doing this, we would ask them to actually kind of coordinate the meeting. You know what I mean? Set the agenda. Hmm. So this um the liaisons, do they have to be um active chaos participants or they could just come from this respective communities and take up the lead as well? No, I think it's the the former. I think they would be active chaos participants, and there is no expectation that the liaison would become the lead. Okay. So, in like, the liaison would sit in on the the meeting, the science user community meeting that would meet say twice a month, and simply listen for needs for metrics or listen for needs for metrics models. And then bring those back, perhaps at this meeting, perhaps at the common meeting, just saying, here's what I'm hearing in the science user community. And I think in addition, like, if I may chime in. Sure. Yeah, of course. Um, so like in my experience, when it comes to liaisons, the point really is to uh, make sure that someone is there with the responsibility to keep up the connection between like in this case, the user community and the chaos project itself. And I think like when I think of this new liaison role, the point really is that they are kind of experts in how chaos works, like what the processes are, what's happening in this community. So they don't have to be experts necessarily on the particular metrics even and the, the conversations that the user community is focusing on. But when something new is coming up or there's an interest in, oh, we don't think we have a metric for this, then the liaison knows um, where to bring up that need um, like what to tell the user community lead as well as participants in terms of, oh, hey, if you fill out this template, then, you know, we can start a conversation in terms of adding that metric. So it's more about making sure that there's a connection and communication between the user community and the chaos project contributors and team members as opposed to saying they have to lead the, the project or any of the activities uh, themselves. That was better said than what I said. Yeah. <laughs> Thank well, you. Well, well <laughs> so yes, I agree. Mm -hmm. um, so Anita, I think if we do identify liaisons to Olda Coast Point, it would need to be somebody who is familiar, I like that, with the processes of chaos more than anything else and kind of know where to ask questions and know what resources are available and how to find them. Okay, awesome, thanks. Yep, you bet. And so Ruth had kind of expressed an interest in serving as the liaison. Did I hear you right, Ruth? <laughs> All right. Um, and I, honestly too, I mean, I think it would be fair to say if as part of that liaison role, I mean, there could be a variety of places where um, things could be brought up. And this community meeting could certainly be one of those. You know, we have a liaison update, you know, for 10 minutes. Yeah, and that's it. I think that would be really good use. So I think it's a good way of framing bringing that, those contributions back to the community. Mm -hmm. There's certainly not all of us can go to all of those meetings and mm -mm, that's just it. about us. <laughs> all right, great. Um, I have really good, I have really good notes here. And I think my action item is to start kind of specifying what these roles might be. Um, and I can share that with everybody. Um, I'm going to, we're going to go maybe another five minutes and then I just wanted to talk about chaos con a little bit. Um, Ruth, you had said you take, took a look at the chaos con notes, but these are the, these are kind of some handwritten notes that are now organized around the, the two questions. So basically, for those that weren't able to attend ChaosCon, we had two kind of lead questions, which were these. And we had people break out into teams of three and then kind of report back against these questions. So that was kind of the how this was structured. 
Um, so, you know, I thought some of these were extremely interesting to me. Actually, all of them were extremely interesting to me. Um, and the link is in the minutes, and I put it in general as well in the in the channel. I think there are a lot of a lot of suggestions. Yeah, go ahead. Do you have that context on ensure a broad community of voices? I was trying to understand that point. I think it's tied to. Um, let's see. This is just for those of you who aren't aware. This is a synthesis of groups of trust, a number of small group activities that happen at Chaos Con. So then maybe uh, I think it's coherence. No, not that. It's one of it's in, connected to one of these, but maybe it's not. I think it was just ensuring. Where was it? This one. Yeah, that yeah. one. I think it was just ensuring that there was no um, like dominant organization that has a say on so what happened. It's not controlled by um, Tesla, for example. Yeah, I don't think we have that concern. Maybe right. we do, and if we yeah, do, we'll talk about I, it. But I don't. But it could emerge. It is the kind of thing that can emerge. I feel like we distribute our. Me too our um feedback pretty widely yeah he went to mailing list <laughs> yeah i think we've learned a lot from uh, the, the projects that we've helped with metrics that you know, we're kind of in the position of almost being like a position where we know all of the possible things that could be wrong with you and why your stomach hurts mm -hmm. 10 of them will kill you but the rest are harmless so I think um, a couple kind of high level things that came out for me from these notes were um, metrics and metrics models. There, there seemed to be a, a series of requests for different metrics and metrics models. So for example, determine business value from a project, like seems like a model to me, you know what I mean? Like, so I, I think we can bring these forward or at least start documenting in metrics models working groups. Um, code quality, test coverage and repos, software license compliance between repos, metric, metric, metric. Um, I think I also, that, oh, go ahead. Yeah. And then I was just going to highlight one I saw that was really interesting, but you can go ahead. Where was it? Um, I think something about like talking about the user groups, the, the uh, yeah, tell user stories of how oh, you passed it. Uh, that one that one yeah yep so we've we've heard this a couple of times now start kind of um getting those stories about how people are using metrics in practice and metrics models in practice to make decisions yeah. we've even seen people write about them too <laughs> so i think it uh also us like writing about these things because sometimes we see people write articles about how they're using chaos metrics mm -hmm. and they're different organizations so maybe we can also do our own writing or even with the podcasts as well yep i like that i think we're we um sometime this month discussed about um starting the podcast on um interviewing communities that have used the chaos mm -hmm. metrics to hit um a hundred and wanted to reach out to the individual persons. Great. I don't know how far that has gone because I've been away from the meetings the past two times. I think so I think you're right, Anita. I think Georg was going to start those up again in maybe late March or early April. He he recently has moved into a different location. So I think he's been pretty busy this month. But I, I do think you're right. I think those are starting up and it is intending to reach out to communities and organizations who are using metrics in meaningful ways. Um, I also, I got a sense through here about, we've talked a little bit about a more data science-y approach towards some of our stuff and maybe being less agnostic on our metrics, starting to help people um, make choices. 
Yeah, like saying <laughs> not only here are the metrics, but you know, these are the metrics that help you improve whatever it is you're trying to improve. And here's how you interpret them. And these are the things you're looking for. So we actually start kind of weighing in on um on metrics and, and probably what you should be looking for. So I, I feel like there was a, a little bit of data science talk through here as well. Um, and then there always seems to be a lot of just help, help, help these communities and organizations filter through the large number of metrics that are available in kind of easy first steps for folks. And I think we're doing that also with metrics models. It's so like here, like that, that was what I was talking about earlier, like assist with the interpretation of results. Probably so, Ruth. I am. Um, what I wanted to do, I had put in the minutes that I'd like to write a blog post against these, but probably need to organize them a little bit more because this was just the first pass I did yesterday. Mm -hmm. And so the blog post would show everything. It'd be like, here's everything that we that we heard. But what we would like to do is highlight, you know, maybe two or three or four of these things as things that we are currently doing in the chaos project and here's how we're doing them and things that we would like to do in the chaos project and here's how we propose um, to do them. So for, ex for example, we could probably pick out a couple of these and tie them to the user communities that we just talked about. You know, like, so the blog would be, here's everything and here's kind of what we're doing in the chaos project. Is that what you were thinking? I saw your chat note. Yeah, you know, something we do in the DI badging, something that we, we did was kind of like pick out the things we wanted to do and put them at the top of the documents so we don't forget so we keep so that's something that I was referring to as well we could yeah I mean I can maybe what I'll do is I'll, I'm just I'm going to keep going through this data and I'll start kind of compressing things together around particular topics like this seems to be a metric and here's all the things that are metricy. this seems to be a metric model here's all the things that are metric modely um these are the things that all seem to be user story centric. You know what I mean? So clearly we have some overlap in here and maybe from there we could start to kind of identify what we want to focus on yeah. um, for the next year. Yeah. All right, great. Um, so yeah, do take a look at this list. It's pretty fun. Take a look at a few things. Um, we didn't have spoons apparently. <laughs> I didn't know that. Um, yes, and we, we had egg coatings and all of yeah, and we didn't have gluten-free options or soy milk. So notes to self in the future. Those are all my comments. What's that? Those are all my comments. So, all right. Yeah, the spoons, that was, I was surprised that we didn't have spoons, but whatever. All right. Um, so I'm going to stop the recording here. Just, um, I think I can do that. And we're going to move on to chaos con. So if you want to stick around. You can. Was I even? Oh, yeah, I was. <laughs>